Hello, the game has started. It's me to go first. I've got an awful rack, very unbalanced, very non bingo -y. Is it too bad to play? I don't think so. I think Fork will score reasonably well, 22 points. And yeah, better than changing. That's a lot more balanced in terms of vowels and consonants. But I have duplicates. Do I have a bingo? Nothing has jumped out at me. I've got the gram ending. So what about the floaters? Not seeing anything with the F or the O. Gosh, three R's, not likely. And the K, a pretty non bingo -y tile. Wow, what a, prom what a promise from opponent. What a start from opponent. Promise takes D-E-R-S. And I have got a few more floaters to consider, but the R and the O are duplicates, and the M duplicates what's on my rack. So I'm not optimistic. And I'm not seeing anything. What about the P? Not seeing anything there. So I trail. I need to keep the board open, and I need to keep scoring. So what about playing... In column 12, tricky because it would have to be an A-E word and it would set up a pretty good spot in column 13. My M can go this side of the M to make double M. You can't see a, a way of making that play well. What about coming down? Ah, oh, well, what about maker? 35 points, decent score, and completely sorts the rack out. Did I consider the A-G-E ending? That would go with R-M, E-R. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything there. Wow, I draw the first blank. I think I am back in the game. But I trail by 30 and opponents on turn. So what do I have here? Well, I have Telegy as a 7. Maker only takes an S, so Telegy plays in row I, making FY. Do I have an alternative bingo? That may be blocked. I have Egg... I do not have Egg Letaire. What would I need for that? An A or an E. Okay, so I don't have that. But do I have something through P or R? I would have telegram onto an A or an M. Well, I've blocked that with maker. Regulate through a U or an A. Only an, an O as a floating vowel, which is quite restrictive. I don't feel that goes well with this rack. What about the over or out prefix? No, not seeing anything. If I did have a play through an R, I may have an E to make promise E. Great, my telegy spot remains, but it's not a great spot because it's a face value bingo, albeit the Y getting doubled, but more to the point, it creates access to triple word squares. So can I do any better? Well, what would better look like? Do I have... Well, is Reglets good? What am I thinking of? Is Reglets good? Let's find out. It is fantastic. Now, that's certainly better than Telegy. It does not provide as many floaters or access to triple word squares. But look what I picked up. Absolute rack of misery. I could be changing here. Or... I could be playing Avour through this R, should it remain available. Opponent may be drawn to this triple word square. Reglets did provide access to one. And it's not terrible access. It's not, it's not bingo-y access, but a high-scoring tile could go under the E. That doesn't alter the fact that I think Reglets was much better than Telegy, and I wasn't seeing anything else and didn't feel minded to, to look further because I think if I found anything better, it would be very marginal. So... If Avour is blocked, and even if not, I've got 
Vogue or Vogie. I need to split up U and V. I don't have to play off both, and Avua leads double I. Vogie leaves EIU. Well, EIU I think is, is much nicer. I wonder why I was so doubtful about Reglats. I guess it's easy to be doubtful about words because no matter how much you study them, any particular word gets played very infrequently. This may be the only time in my life that I've played Reglats, even though it's high probability. That's just the nature of the game. There are an awful lot of words, and compared with the total ocean of words, only a few drops get played in every game, or in any game. Now, a pen and taking a while, is he about to bingo? And there probably will be some six-letter front extensions to forks. Possibly some four-letter post extensions. I know neither. Wow, that is a big play because cop takes an S in front. So opponent's signalling he's got an S. There are three S's to come and a blank. I don't think I can do much about that. S is most useful in last place and I simply cannot block that. So, Vogi or Avur. Three vowels, including a U, or just double I. Five I's to come, three U's to come. Both are pretty unpleasant prospects. But alas, both are better than changing. What about playing U Oi somewhere? Well, that does play. Has the X been played? It has. This is what I was thinking of. Uoi. Only 13 points. This is a much nicer Rackley than the two I've mentioned. Wow. And I'm setting up an X spot here, but I may draw the X myself, and if opponent goes there, he'll be providing access to triple word squares. Yeah, 18 points. Well, that's not that much better than Uoi. Was there a better spot for that play? It doesn't play under or over reglets. Well, I guess the al an altern another alternative would be Auri using the Uoi tiles. Let me put this back. I'm not feeling amazing about Vogi. So that's only 10 points, but it's sorting the rack out that's the priority. Now I don't want to be going into next turn with six vowels, especially with opponent lurking with an S or a blank. Auri takes a T, five T's to come, but and it may take a P as well. But both P's have gone, so nothing big can be put on top of Auri. Still the other V to come. Wow, this is a, a tricky spot. And opponent's got bingo -y tiles, and I'm creating masses of bingo lanes with this play. I am... Going back to Vogi for 18. Well, pretty awful. U and W, miles away from a bingo. EW is good, but I don't have any fantastic plays. Wow, their opponent goes with a bingo. And retakes the lead. What can I do about it? Do I have anything through this E? Not with all these vowels. And I don't have any five letter plays. W ending Y. Weighty, not good. And it's a shame because there's a decent five letter spot in row B as well. I, I could get 50 points if I could have a five letter play ending W or Y. Just don't have that. Now 
Now, why did I play Vogie? I could have played Vooge. Well, that would have kept another eye, so... But anyway, that would have been... Vooge would have been better. So, I can play Yor. But I'm just inviting real pain next turn. However, this is certainly better than changing, so... What can I do apart from your Playing off the W and the Y is a good thing. Neither tile is bingo -y. I'm not setting up anything huge. Is And I, I just can't score anything like that around reglets. I am going with this. And no scoring tiles, so... Tricky rack, but it is balanced, and in the absence of scoring tiles, what's left must be somewhat bingo-y. Now, through an N, I would have intuited no N available, but column 8 might be attractive to opponent, especially with five Ns to come. And N is not the most bingo-y floater. Do I have anything through the R? I don't think so. This is a pretty non bingo -y rack, so... I I suspect intuited it might be the only one. But what are the other floaters? R and E. Wow, that's about it. So how to sort this rack out? Well, I need to play off the duplicates and the U. It's amazing how long this triple word square has remained available. But it has. So do it would sort the rack out except it would still be vowel heavy. Can I do anything better? Ah, Jewett does play in row L. I only trail by 12. And the board will remain open because of column 14, because of row C. Row C, do I have anything there? Now, uh, I was thinking about duty, but that requires a further D. Now, 28 points for opponent. He set up a spot, but it's, it's not a massive spot. There aren't that many tiles, which high-scoring tiles, which can go to the right of the U in respect of a column 15 vertical play. What are they? H. And that's it. And there's only one of those to come. The opponent doesn't have to put a high scoring tile there to score well. But I don't have to bust a gut to, to take that out. So, but if I did want to take it out, what could I do? I could play 2E. Actually, this isn't, this isn't bad. It's 17 points. And this rack leave is a better rack leave than if I'd played Jewett. If I played Jewett, the D would be off my rack. Well, the D helps EIT. 17 points for Chewy. How many points for Jewett? 17. So this is a better play. Wow, looking slightly better. I have shifted. I have shifted. I was just about to say from an R I would have red shift and there isn't one, but I have shifted and that plays in rows G and I. Wow. That is quite some turnaround for this rack. I have been wading through dross and now suddenly I have a bingo on my rack, but only those two lanes and they could be blocked. Double E does not take an S. And knew, wow, I, I thought for a moment opponent was blocking me, but he, he has not. Shifted does not play in row D. Shifted does not have an anagram. So, above or below the center, center line? Well, the I will be going next to this double letter square. So what big tiles can go above or below the I? B can go above only. Q can go above only. 
I think that's determinant because QI could play. Yeah, and X can go above only. So they, they're all going above, which means I can do this. Yeah, and that is less dangerous. Lower scoring tiles can go under the eye. Opponent, I was going to say he could play Cade, but he can't because of SA, but there could be four letter plays ending in D. Anyway, this is my play. Great. I draw the J and the Z. They're non bingo -y, but they certainly hold out the promise of a big score. I have Jay-Z on my rack. I have a 30-point lead. Still a lot of tiles to come. Still, this triple word square available. If opponent doesn't play on the triple word square near shifted, what do I have? I have ZA. I have... Uh, no, I don't. S only takes an I of the tiles on my rack. Do I have any J-I or Z-I words? No. Okay, so... Wow, if I only had another E, I could have Jeezley in column 8. What about row D? So my Y can go, un can go underneath Ya. And my R can... Nothing goes under lab, so it'd have to be IY, unlikely, or IR. Yeah, nothing, nothing there for my J or Z, so having my initial delight on seeing this rack has been tempered somewhat, but I do have a lead. I could just play Jizz in column four, 29 points, better than nothing and completely dampening row H. Wow, fantastic bingo from opponent. 69 points, he retakes the lead. Gosh, brutal. What am I going to do about this? I have Jizz in column 11. What does that score? 41 points, pretty good, and I'm retaining L and Y, which go well together, and the Y is good for score. I don't think there is anywhere for Jay-Z, which gets rid of all of my big tiles. Well, there is through this A, but that doesn't get doubled. And a good thing about Jizz is that it stops or takes out row O. However, it also gifts a big column 13 play. There are four N's to go next to ZE. There's a B to go next to JAR and a W. So WAN, what would that score? 43 points. Well, that's not determinative of my, of my play. And that would leave row H alone, but it's not a and it's not a huge row because of the restrictions on the vowels which can go underneath the S. This doesn't feel great, but I think it's only because of the column 13 counterplays. Let me have a think, I've got eight minutes. What about a play through this E? Can I put my Z on that? Or my J? No. Ah, ah, wow. Do I have Jazael? Oh, my word. If this is good, something tells me it isn't, but I think it is. Or is it? If this is good, it's 96 points. Bang! And it is. Good grief. I so nearly missed that. And I think this comes back again. This is probably a word which I have never played, ever. And it's good, and it's down 96 points. Amazing. Wow, that would have been so painful to have missed that. And it takes out row O. And coming back down to earth, I have drawn a heap of crap. Is there an I for chin? Well, there is, but it's very low scoring. Look at that, I've played off J and Z and picked up Q and X. Extraordinary. 
great. That's a very average score for opponent, 33 points, and he's taking out a hot spot. So he's provided a new spot for Q. I've got Cade. But two U's to come. Maybe I should hang on to the Q and think about playing off the, the X. Is there an R for X-ray? No, seven minutes on my clock, 12 tiles in the bag. Wow, I'm still reeling from, from both playing Jezail and nearly missing it. So, where can my X play? Only an E goes underneath an R. I can't reach this triple word square. Where's my J? Not available for Jinx. This is actually a really, really tricky rack to deal with, especially when you're coming down from a high. So I could play any. How many vowels to come? 11 out of 19. A lot of vowels, including two I's for the Q. So let me see what this scores. 28 points. I would like to keep piling the points on because my lead is only 27 points. I could easily be caught. Well, what about a play in column 13 with my X? So I could play Rax. Let me, let me pause for a moment and have a think about this. Well, another possibility is Tax. 46 points, pretty attractive, and the Y is a quasi vowel. So, if I draw an A or an I, I've got Cade. If I draw an A, I've got Cade. If I draw an I, I've got Chi and Gi. Well, I, I can't varnish the lily. This is a dreadful Rackley, but 46 points is 46 points. Am I missing something? I almost have the tiles for Yakona. I would need an A and an O. Is there anywhere better for the X? There, there could be a big spot hiding in plain sight. Hex. No. Oh, is there an O for Onyx? No. I, I am going with tax for 46. Wow, no vowels at all, but I guess that means opponent might have a whole lot of them. And look at the remaining the remaining bag, a whole bunch of vowels, plus B, U, U, V, and W. Well, the V's gone down, 31 points, opponent is continuing to score. Wow, through an A, I would have Trank, and there isn't one. I don't think, no. So I lead by about 36 tiles in the bag, and they're horrible, horrible tiles. But with the W and the B, opponent might be able to eke out another couple of 30-point plays, and I'm in trouble, and it's not as if I've got a rack to write home about. Still two U's to come, so... Let me see if I can play off the Y for score. The S is pretty useless, I think. No great... E S spots on the board. Vogi doesn't take one. Yay takes nothing. Well, I just have no vowels. What am I going to do? Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This works. Why rent? 30 points. The 30 point is always feels a sort of magical figure because it feels like half a bingo. Yeah, and I'd like to turn over tiles to expedite the end of the game and to increase my chances of drawing a U or an I. And look at this, this rack leave is pretty good because if I draw an I, I've got chin and chins and chi. So an I would be good, a U would be good if it's accompanied by another vowel. Only three minutes on my clock. Fantastic. I draw an A and an I and a D. So I've got pretty much every single short u Q word on my rack. What's opponent got in his locker? Remaining tiles are absolutely horrible.
And I don't think there are a huge number of scoring spots. A pennant could put his W under he, a WE play. But I have a decent lead now. I have a 70 point lead, 74 points. I don't think I'm going to be stuck with my Q, but the Cade spot has gone and the Chi spot has gone. So I've got Chi in row N, Cat, which is not on my rack, in column 14. I've got Cade and Cades in row L. Yeah, so I'm not going to be stuck with the Q, but if a pennant takes out the bottom right, I may, I may be left with just QI for 11 points. So I'm not home and dry yet, but I feel that I'm close. Where's the opponent gone? Way over 31. Where's that? Ah, oh, next to Axe, taking out the QI spot. Providing nothing new for my Q. So, what am I going to do? There are, I can see what opponent's got and the bag is empty. Through an S and a U, he would have sub audio. That's not available. Three minutes on my clock. Is there really nothing better than cat? That, that's awful. The E is completely useless for me. There's cat in column six. Can't, I, I've got cat in. I do not have cat around the R. I don't have a T. 14 points for cat. That, that will be enough to get me over the line. But I don't want to overlook a, a bigger Q spot. I don't think there's anything huge available. Ah, oh, well, EAH is good, so why not just play chins down here? 20 points, and surely I can go out with Dan. Is Dane good? Not sure. Rand is good. And Dant is good. So I, I'm certainly going out. Two minutes on my clock. Have I overlooked a chins spot? Why rent does not take anything. Sprig is good. No, I am going... Is there an R for Kinder? There is not. So I now lead by about 60 points and I think opponent's goose is cooked. So where is the best spot for Dan? I should be sure of Dane. Dane Gelt is good. But it may just be a capital D as a four letter play. Dean. Well, that doesn't get tripled. Not sure. Did is good. And is good, but head isn't. Rand, 10 points. Nothing in the bottom right. Dant in column six, but I'm not saying anything which scores more than Rand, but opponent may go there. He could play Budar. Nine minutes on opponent's clock, one on mine. It's nearly the beginning of the month, it's the middle of the month, but beginning of the month, brand new video goes up on Patreon for all supporters of the channel. It's a blitz game, it's always good fun. This month is no exception. Many thanks to everyone who supports this channel on Patreon. You keep the channel going. And to show my appreciation, there is every month a brand new Blitz game available exclusively for subscribers to the supporters to the channel, not subscribers. I keep getting that wrong. So do check that out. And if you're a patron, you also have the opportunity to be my opponent on the regular channel. So hopefully that is some, some inducement. And over and above the inducement, huge thank yous to everyone who supports the channel in that fashion. It keeps the channel going. Now, one minute on my clock. Opponents played Bide for 21. He's losing. I've got A-N-D. I haven't seen anywhere better than Rand for 10. 
and the final score. 429 for my opponent, 487 for me, a winning margin of 58 points, so a huge, huge win. Let's see what I missed. And my rating back above 1800 where it belongs. So, opponents saying thank you, enjoyed it, all the best. I uh, hope he understands that Britishism. Now, here we go. It was me to go first. What a horrible rack. I played fork, and fork is being suggested. Opponent's rack, and look at this. This is the sort of rack which you hope to start every game with. A ton of bingos available. And opponent plays promise for the maximum score. Now, my rack. <gasps> wow, missed bingo. Good grief. Missed seven letter bingo. Wow. Migra, M Migra, J6, because of promiser and promisee. Wow. Okay, well, I can hardly complain about my, my rubbish racks later in the game when, upon being given a good rack, I completely ignore the bingo. So I get 35 points. Now, opponent, he's drawn well. Look at this. Well, I was going to say, look at this, he's got Gypster. He doesn't, that's a with a Y. So no bingo, plays Prig. And now Reglets is available, but also available. Vergelt. And Gentler, which I didn't see. And Telegy, which I did, but Reglets is best. Great rack for opponent. Doesn't bingo. Now, he did have Constacrest on... And whatever. I believe my opponent mainly plays with the American word list, so it's possible that these are Collins words. I don't know, but missed bingo nonetheless. Now, just 17 points between us, and this was a horrific rack. And I thought about a Vua for 26, and I think I. Wow, I ended up with Vogie for 18. Interesting. I'm not sure that, that was the right the right play. I don't think the board considerations are that are huge. I don't think the board hugely favours one move over the other. So just looking at score and rack leave, is AIU eight points better than double I? I don't think so. Double I is pretty grim, must be worth about minus minus seven or eight. AIU Pretty grim, May, maybe the same or worse. So, yeah, I think the fact that there's a U there and an extra vowel there basically equal the detriment caused by a duplicate vowel. So, yeah, I should have returned to Avur and thought a bit more about the score. So I play, woo, I play Vogi, and this is opponent's rack. He signalled with Cot that he probably had an S. And he gets Lornus down for 79. So I'm not feeling great at this stage. I trail by 40-odd points, and I've got a rack which is really hard to sort out. In fact, it's not possible to sort it out, apart from changing. And I play Yaw for 32, which does not sort the rack out because the rack leave is terrible. I would be extremely lucky to have a bingo after playing Yaw. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything obviously better. <gasps> Opponent's rack missed bingo. Horient H4 through this R of reglets. Wow. That would have given opponent a really big lead, especially with the with the, the junk I was dealing with. Anyway, doesn't spot it, plays horn. And wow, he he does play an N. So what was the missed bingo? Horiant. Interesting. If he'd played Horiant, I would have had intuited. So, my rack. What do I do? I play Chewy for 17. Good grief. Let me just go back. I could have stuck an E in front of that, and I probably should have done. No, I shouldn't. The E would have added five points, but I think E helps DIT by 
by about five points. Certainly very close to that. Yeah, so I'm happy with Tui versus Etui. However, what about Tired? Getting the D doubled, keeping TU. Well, Tui keeping Diet. Diet's pretty good. Yeah. So, let me just check. Tui... Tui does keep Diet. So, and it scores 17 points. So is Diet 15 points better than TU? It must be close. TU is negative, minus 3 or 4. And Diet is positive. Must be around 8 or 9. So 11 or 12 points difference and 15 points difference in score. They're close. Now, opponent's rack... <gasps> Missed bingo cabotage, d5. Wow, through the E of reglet, so very tricky one to see. I wouldn't have been confident of that myself. Opponent plays gab. And look at this, I trail by 50. However, I have drawn from... Well, this is the, the whole point of keeping a rack leave light diet and sacrificing points. It just increases your chances of having a bingo. So even though I draw the F and the H, I do have a bingo, and that's because DEIT provides such a, a strong base for a bingo. I'm only drawing three random tiles to a very good four-letter set. So I have a bingo. I'm back in the game. In fact, I lead, but not for long, because opponent has a ton of bingos, including located for 69. So this, this was the turning point in the game. I trailed by 40. I don't have a bingo Iraq. I'm agonising about playing Jizz in column 11. And then I spot Jazael here in column 8. And look at that. 96 points. Decent rack leave in the circumstances. And a game-changing play. I now lead by 60. Opponent plays Nide. And, well, my lead's still 30. I've drawn the Q and the X. I don't have vowels. But I do have tax for 46 which from my opponent's perspective is 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 tough. It, it, it doesn't alter the fact... My, my rack leave is irrelevant to the fact that opponent is staring at a 70-point deficit and in his mind he will feel he needs a bingo to win and he's not going to do that with this rack and the pool looks grim. So he plays Ivoe. And now my rack, and I play Y Rent and that's absolutely fantastic for me because this... This isn't a rack with a lot of possibilities, given the absence of vowels. And I could see QI, but a very low score and a horrible rack leave. Why rent is a, a fantastic play for me, so I was delighted to see that good score, a decent rack leave. Opponent hogging both U's, plays woe. So opponent managing to keep scoring, but he's, he's half a bingo behind and... The bag is empty and he's got only six tiles, so his, his game is run. My rack. Cheese, D15. Ah, getting the Q doubled. Interesting. Ah, and I could have played caddies, but keeping double N, so I'm not sure I thought through every possibility in column 15. I went with chins, and maybe this was just an instinctive play amongst the choices in that the rack leave of ADN was the most flexible in terms of achieving two outs which I wanted to do since the bag was empty. It's possible I could have achieved two outs with double N, and also possible with AD double N, but it was fa fairly easy to spot the ones with ADN. Opponent's rack, nothing great available, plays Bide, and finally Rand for 10, scored the most. So, what a game, absolutely amazing fun, and a really wide open game with lots of bingos and lots of missed bingos and quite an ebb and flow game i thought for a while that i was that i was trailing and struggling and which indeed i was and then opponent missed horian which i didn't know at the time but the game would have been different had that have been played and i managed to get back on track and the absolute turning point of the game was Giselle. i would have been smiling and and obviously doing my 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 stoical post-match commentary if I had missed that, but I would have been dying inside. However, I did spot it, and that made the 
big difference to the game. So many thanks to my opponent for a good battle. I hope you enjoyed watching that game and I will see you next time.